Hey guys, welcome to Wave. We talk about all important concepts for long-term crypto investments. So if you're interested in that, hit the like uh, button, uh, do subscribe. Uh, in this episode, we will uh, be continuing the series on the Terra Luna crash, the stable coins. And in the last episode, we described uh, which could probably be a 100x kind of a stable coin uh, maker. We will go deep into that to try and figure out why this can have a great potential. Right, so Maker backs the stablecoin Dai. So Dai is all pegged to be always at uh, one dollar. Uh, Maker has been in existence from I think about 2014. They were trying. The team was trying to build it. 2017, I guess, is when they released it. Uh, if you look at their price charts, uh, Maker today is trading uh, you know, almost 75% uh, discount from their all-time high of six thousand dollars. Today, it's just roughly about thousand five hundred odd dollars. Um, even in terms of, uh, you know, obviously in terms of market cap, also it is it is significantly lower today than what it used to be. Now, what exactly is Maker and who is using it? If you go to their website, you'll see the Maker ecosystem. There are more than 400 apps that are currently using uh, Dai uh, stablecoin. Right, you can buy Dai on several platforms. You can use Dai on several platforms. Uh, you can hold Dai to uh, to get say a savings rate like how you get in your bank accounts there are many platforms especially gaming platforms uh, charity foundations and so on that are accepting die it's a huge uh, player in the DeFi space um, and gaming of course like i mentioned but what exactly is die so the maker protocol uh, you know we saw why a stable coin is needed right why because of volatility uh, you need a stable coin to act as everyday payments in the crypto space right? uh, outside of the fiat currency that we all have. So DAI was also uh, one of them that tried to create uh, a protocol like that. How does this work? Well, in uh, Maker, what you have to do is you have to deposit an asset. Um, they started off with Ethereum. So you have to deposit Ethereum to mint DAI. Now, let's say you want $100 worth of DAI. So you have to deposit 150% of that uh, as a collateral, right? So you have to deposit $150 uh, dollars worth of Ethereum as a collateral to generate DAI. And once you generate DAI, you can use it for various purposes. Um, we'll try and uh, there's a small section here. Yeah. So what is the reason for uh, using DAI? It, it's a store of value. It's a medium of exchange, a unit of account. It's a, stand, it's a standard of uh, deferred payments. So DAI performs all the necessary functions of a currency so you know it forms as a great stable coin in the pay, uh, payments or the whole DeFi space of the crypto uh, uh, you know ecosystem now the, how do you create uh, a, a die right so there is something called a maker vault so to create uh, a die you have to first uh, you know you create a vault a basis maybe the uh, oasis borrow protocol now you generate die by uh, you know, depositing your cryptocurrency, uh, uh, which as a collateral, like in, uh, it could be Ether, and I think now they've opened it up to have multi assets in it. You can pay down the debt once you're done using Dai, and you have to pay something called a stability fee because you know, as a sort of a fee for using uh, the service. And once you pay the fees and deposit it back, you can withdraw your collateral. So that's how this whole uh, system works. And if you read their white paper, they have actually accounted for a lot of. Um, uh, you know, uh, risks in terms of, let's say, a user uh, not paying it back. Right? What happens? A user, uh, the collateral going down in value. So when any of that happens, they have an elaborate mechanism of uh, auctions to liquidate the assets and so that you can recover, uh, uh, you know, fully and return back to the user whatever asset is left. Right? So uh, in the white paper, they talk about uh, all these aspects. They also... Uh, mention a few actors that are important to keep this in place. So there are actors like keepers who, uh, these are automated actors who are, who basically buy and sell or die to maintain the target price of $1. There are price oracles. So oracles essentially uh, bring information from the outside world uh, to the blockchain and price oracles are important uh, to ensure that uh, the blockchain understands, uh, uh, you know, what is the price of the assets that are collateralized. Right now, the price oracles are very important because 
in case uh, you know you have fed the wrong information there, there is a chance that a liquidation can happen uh, you know some sort of a scam can occur to prevent that uh, maker actually has created a very elaborate uh, uh, you know oracle security module uh, this this in fact is so so elaborate so well thought of that other defi projects have begun to use it uh, so this is one aspect where i felt they have really done um, uh, well in terms of the technology right um, other than that they have something called the die savings rate this is like your savings rate for your um, savings bank account uh, i i i guess this is around 6% so you can deposit and earn about 6% now then there is the risk parameters now this is very very important right uh, why is that because uh, we saw what happened to luna we saw how luna crashed uh, so badly it, it crashed more than 99% and uh, you know assessing the risk uh, that a token like this or can actually face is very important and i feel they have done an, an excellent job in trying to figure out you know what kind of uh, risk the uh, sort of exists for uh, maker uh, and what can they can do to mitigate it so you can have many black swan events like an uh, attack on the collateral type so it need not be an attack on maker itself there could be an attack on ethereum or any of the collateral that is used to back tie right now there could be a large unexpected decrease in collaterals right maybe uh, some government decides to ban uh, a, a cryptocurrency so this can trigger a huge drop in price in a very short time right or there's a highly coordinated oracle attack and hence the oracle security module becomes very important right and there could be a malicious uh, you know person within the maker governance uh, as well or you know malicious maker governance purpose so they have tried to understand these risks and try and uh, mitigate these uh, in some way uh, and i feel this white paper pretty much uh, you know elaborately describes what needs to be done in what kind of situation they even have uh, a proposal to have a uh, not a proposal they have it in place to have an emergency shutdown in case of uh, certain scenarios um, so it's very clear on who can trigger it uh, what happens uh, when an emergency shutdown is initiated and so on now uh, what is the addressable market the, there are people using dai for working capital for hedging for collateralizing their leverage um what does that mean well there are actually people who deposit ether into vaults um to buy dai uh, to mint dai and they use that dai to buy more ether right because they speculate that the price of ether will continue to rise and this is a way for them to um you, you know sort of uh, collateralize their assets to buy more uh, ether uh, this is a great use case that's actually uh, you know seen uh then there is merchant receipts cross border transaction remittances so if you're living um in if you're working in america you want to send back money to your family in india you can do that there are charities and uh, ngos uh, who want to keep their uh, payments distributed uh, transparent and hence on a distributed ledger they're using dai as a way to receive uh, funds many blockchain game developers are using uh, dai uh, then there are prediction markets so prediction markets are basically betting Right, where uh, the price of the uh, a stability of the asset price is important, so uh, you know maybe betting with Bitcoin or Ether uh, is not as uh, good as probably betting with uh, Dai because you know Dai is always pegged at one dollar. Uh, so these are the elaborate um, you know detailing that the Dai uh, that the maker team has sort of uh, put through, and I feel this white paper clearly est- establishes. not just their goals vision uh, but also the security and inherent risks that a protocol like this would definitely have and they have uh, you know going by the white paper at least they have enough mechanisms in place to uh, try and address that um, if you go to the appendix there are many use cases that you can see uh, you can read through them if you're interested i'll also walk you through mesari right mesari has uh, Uh, you know you can go to mesari uh, and you can search for maker you can if you do not want to read the white paper you can quickly go through the overview and the uh, road map uh, on mesari now if you look at their road map in 2017 they launched the single collateral dai i think ether was the collateral back then uh, then they have had many changes to their uh, you know foundation they uh, re- released multi collateral uh, dai um, then there is 
uh, other products or uh, you know product enhancements that have that have been in the pipeline and uh, which have been completed over a period of time if you look at their investors right another big thing right why do we always look at investors it's because uh, you and i probably do not have the time and resources to do due diligence on the team the legality the technology and so on but large investors who are investing enormous amount of money do have such resources uh, and expertise so if you notice uh, some very important investor or some very well known investor as one of their backers then you know that this token at least has gone through a due diligence process here we can see that you know anderson horowitz uh, a very uh, very well known uh, vc firm uh, is one of their investors uh, right you have polychain capital you have you know many investors were part of this uh, some of them in fact were brought in for strategic reasons which i will show you in the next uh, section now okay. you can also look at the uh, tokenomics uh, in that let's look at the private sale right so in the first sale that happened anderson horowitz uh, i think was one of their first backers um, and they had a second sale although at a down round though here it was uh, $300 for uh, for maker here it was 250 then there was a sale that happened in 2019 uh, where they raised funds from paradigm and dragonfly capital and this was for a, probably for a strategic reason for them to uh, you know uh, get get some help to expand into asian markets right so there are many investors who were brought in for such reasons as well now if we look at the technology section what i would want uh, anyone to go and see over here is the audit section right just go through the audit section and look for whether any uh you know any of these uh, audit uh, of, uh, organizations found any critical issue right uh, if you just read through it you'll see that uh, like these guys they found about 16 issues of various sensitivities but none of them were thought to be critical right and uh, this other one they have figured out that there are many medium to uh, uh, informational to medium severity issues but i guess nothing is critical uh so that is a, a good thing to know that n- n- nothing is critical there is another thing that you can do go to baserank.io you'll see a lot of uh, rating agencies uh who try to rate uh, the token uh you'll see a, a, a sort of a score along with uh, you know the outlook and uh, uh, how they rate it if you try and dig deeper they actually base their ratings on various things like team score project ecosystem so a lot of parameters are evaluated you can even click on this report to uh, you know go through a detailed report uh, on how they came up with this rating so you know if you do not want to read the white paper and do interpretations yourself maybe you can try and read one of these uh, reports that give you extensive information about uh, why a certain rating was arrived at now token insight uh, has given them a rating of about 80 uh, now blockonomy has given uh, an a verdict of excellent a rating of about 74 uh if you uh, look at the parameters uh, i think except for uniqueness they have four and above rating for all other parameters like product progress this is very important by the way uh, so if in their roadmap if uh, they are, they have mentioned that they want to do or uh, release an x feature uh, in the next 6 months by end of 2023 whatever are they meeting what they are promising right that is very important so looks like they are pretty much meeting i think they have about a four and a half out of five for that the team uh, for that they scored about four token fundamentals uh, github now this is very important right the github activity is something that block economy tracks so this is important because now you know that there are developers who are um, actively doing uh, or working on a day to day basis for this uh, and then of course marketing if you make something and nobody knows about it there's no point so how good is their marketing and how good is their partnerships to enable uh you know this uh, this idea to spread that also seems to be 4 out of 5 but where i think it really lacks is uniqueness um 2 out of 5 that's because there are so many uh, stable coins um and uh, something like a tether or usdc uh, they are, they are really controlling the stable coin market right now um as we saw in yesterday's report dai only has about a 10% market share in in the 182 billion uh, market share uh and uniqueness is very important here but if we remember the three kinds of crypto uh, fiat backed collateral backed and non collateralized uh, 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 you know stable coins among the three kinds of stable coins uh, 
this was probably the one that was decentralized and not as risky where there was no collateral so you know if you sort of trade off between is it decentralized and is it safe then i think uh, maker uh, dai is in that unique position which has both the benefits and that is probably very important uh, there are other uh, uh, you know to- uh, token uh, scoring uh, agencies as well you can go through them uh, some of them have given 87 broadly there seems to be a consensus of uh, this being a good token for the long run uh, however there are some uh, you know some guys like this who have given them a sell verdict right uh, it is important to also go through them to see why is it that they've given them a sell verdict right so their concerns is weak liquidity and restrictive system parameters right where essentially if you are if you are to put in 150% collateral to to uh, get um, you know 100% of dai like if you are to put 150 dollars worth of collateral for you to get 100 dollars worth of uh, dai then that is definitely um, a roadblock for explosive growth um, and i didn't see anywhere uh, uh, on their white paper or the road maps what they plan to do about that but this is definitely a concern so they have definitely point, uh, pointed that out but considering that something like aluna has crashed um, you know maybe collateral is important uh, so we, we're not sure how that will uh, impact the future of this token uh, but for now looking at the token ratings uh, this looks like an interesting token to have in your portfolio uh, please do your own research this was educational content to help you understand uh what are the basic resources at least that you can read to figure out if something is good or bad uh for me personally this seems like an excellent token and i think potentially this could be one of those 50 100x tokens for the long run and uh, i would definitely try and have this in my portfolio uh hope this helped in your research uh, stay tuned for more content